Hi everyone, I'm Beth. My name is Rebecca of Hip Knit Hooray, and this is going to be my video sharing my six fall knitting plans for this season. I learned a lot from my first video that I filmed a few days ago, my podcast. The first being that I definitely need to have a glass of water next to me while filming. <laughs> and the second is the setup. I purposely placed the camera a little bit further away because I wanted to show the entire project a whip in the frame but I realized it may have been a tad too far because in editing it was a little bit quiet so my apologies for that I've since shifted the setup a little bit so I'm a little bit closer to the camera and we'll see how this goes and in this video I want to share my six fall knitting plans I had filmed a reel a few days ago called the same thing but it was four projects I've since expanded it to six for this video but in those reels I've been doing them every season so far I did one for the spring the summer now the fall I'll be doing one later this season but the premise of these videos I know it's a really popular video on YouTube and for good reason I love watching everyone's knitting plans for me though I have been doing this planning every season and using and thinking about my stash yarn. I saw this meme once that said buying yarn and knitting are two separate hobbies and I totally resonate with that, with that view. I love my yarn stash, I love having a stash and it makes me really happy and excited to see all the yarns, the compositions, and really it comes down to the possibility. I like having the yarn and all the, the future projects or creativity that comes with it. When I purchase yarn and bring yarn into my stash, I would say I there's two routes. I will see a yarn and I will like it, so I'll purchase it and I'll have an idea of what I want to knit with it. I'll know, okay, I want to knit a sweater with this, I'll knit a winter accessory, but I won't know the exact pattern. I just know I like the yarn. And the second, which is a little bit more rare, is I'll see the yarn and I need it for a specific project and I'll cast it on right away. Usually I have the yarn for a few weeks, a few months, maybe a few years before I end up casting on project which leaves time for me to think about what I want to knit with it and it's nice because things my plans will always change and you'll see there's some overlap or repeat so there's some patterns that made a reappearance for my spring knitting plans which I think reaffirms that I really want to knit that project but there's some things that have totally changed I wanted to knit a certain pattern or project with it in the spring and now it's different and that's totally fine it comes down to when uh, designers come up with new patterns new releases and I get excited about those patterns or my taste change maybe I see a gap in my wardrobe that I want to fill or there's a certain technique that I want to try so I'm totally fine with my plans changing and I think that's what's so fun about having the stash because you're able to kind of think about what you really want in your wardrobe and make a piece that you're really happy with so with these, uh, with this video, I think it's uh, quite obvious, but I'll explain the premise of what I was thinking it's gonna be. I'm gonna be talking about six projects and I have my uh, computer here, I'm looking off to the side, just because I wanna be able to reference yardage, materials, uh, knitting needle size, what I like about the project. So I have all the Ravelry, all the projects on Ravelry queued up already. And I have my stash yarn off to the side. So I already have the yarns that I'm gonna be using in my possession. <laughs> so I'll show, be showing it to you, uh, the yarn, and just talking about what the project is and why I wanna knit it, and maybe some early modifications that I'm thinking about. So the first one, which I already talked about in my last podcast, and I already cast it on, but it is a fall knitting project, so I do wanna mention it, is the sweater number 14 v-neck. And this is a really popular pattern by My Favorite Things Knitwear. It is a very simple construction. I would say it's, I would deem it appropriate for beginner knitters if you're interested in knitting your first sweater. The pattern is knit on a larger gauge at six millimeter needles. And she also uses three strands of fingering weight yarn held together. So it's a bit of a looser gauge, but I think this pattern 
pairs well to substituting different types of yarn for it. I will be using Lion Brand Wool Ease in the shade Linen, held together with Drops Kid Silk in the shade 20, or I think it's called Beige. So like I said, the pattern has a pretty simple and timeless construction. You knit the back panel, then you knit the front to shape the V, and then you knit the body in the round, and then you knit the two by two ribbing. And that's what really attracted me to the pattern. I've knit it before, just the crew neck version, not the V-neck. And I have really loved the pattern. I love, I've been loving wearing it over the years, but I really wanted that V-neck. I think there's a layer of coziness to it because I've seen it styled with a tank underneath. I'm planning to knit mine as a more oversized version, so I'll be sizing up and I'll be using uh, Wool Ease is a worsted weight, so it'll be a, a bit of a thicker gauge sweater, but like I said, super cozy, super oversized. I'll be doing the uh, long ribbing for the sleeves, which I, which I really like, but I'll be doing a split hem for the bottom. And this one, I anticipate I'll be finished quite soon. It's knit, like I said, at a very large gauge, so hopefully it won't take too, too long because Winter approaches really quickly in Toronto. Fall is super short before it gets really cold. So I want to be able to have this to layer over thinking a pair of skinny jeans, leggings to lounge around the house, run errands. And I wanna be able to wear it without my jacket before it gets too cold. So that's my first project. The second project moved up in my knitting plan quite quickly when I saw it released a few days ago. It is the Kutar Wrap by Sari Northland. And this pattern I had seen in Sari's knitting podcast for a few months now, and I loved how it looked. I'm not a big lace knitter. I've knit, I think just one project now in lace, which is the Peacock Tee. And I, I don't enjoy knitting lace too, too much. Uh, it's a little bit involved and I find it a little bit stressful to keep up with because I was always missing um, pattern repeats or yarn overs or knit two together so my stitch count was always off so I didn't enjoy that part of it but I really like the look of lace and I really like this wrap cardigan because it's not all over lace the lace panels are just at the front which I think will be a really engaging knit because you have the lace to work, but most of the project is knit in stockinette. So I'm thinking of using uh, this yarn, which is Senes Garden Sunday, in the shade 6501, held together with Romney Wool's house brand Mohair. So I don't know if there was a shade name, and I don't think they've produced this yarn. I don't think they're producing this yarn anymore. At least I haven't seen it at their store, but it's around 200 meters for every 25 grams. Super soft, pretty affordable in this dusty blue shade. So I actually had this yarn first and then I went out to purchase this to, to match with it. I have around a thousand meters of this. So I knew when I had purchased the yarn, I would be able to make a sweater in my size but it would have to be one that uses under a thousand meters. So I had to be a bit more careful about it. And I looked at the uh, meterage requirements for this pattern, and I think it'll definitely work. It is uh, 1,380 meters to 2,960 meters, but I think that includes holding the yarns together. So I think I should have more than enough for my size, I hope. Uh, and this project is knit with a light fingering and lace weight yarn held together, so just like this, and it's knit on five millimeter knitting needles. So a bit more of a looser area gauge as well, but I think that's totally fine. I actually prefer that for a wrap because you'll be most likely layering this over uh, other items, like a tank top or maybe a turtleneck. So totally fine with the area gauge, and I think that means it'll be an even quicker knit as well. I don't know exactly when I'll be casting on this project. I have a few test knits and projects in the works that need to start before this one. And with it being a lace project, I want it to be my main whip because I want to be able to keep track of the rows and know where I am in the process 
it may be harder just being a more beginner lace sitter to put it down for a few days or a week and pick it back up and not know what's happening anymore with the knit. So hopefully I'll be able to cast it on this season, but it just moved up in the list so much because I really love the design. So that's the second project. The third project is one that I have seen for about a year now and I loved it when I first saw it. It is the Frankie Genzer or Frankie Sweater by Sennis Garden and it is in their Fall 2022 pattern booklet. I think it's Fall 2022. Yes, I think so. And this pattern is a pretty simple construction again. It is knit in the round. Uh, with raglan increases. Then you split for the sleeves and the body and you knit in the round. And then you have these super long and a really nice statement, twisted rib hems uh, for both the sleeves and the body. And I really love the design of this. I think it's a great way to showcase a yarn. It can be a really nice staple. And I had wanted to knit it last year. I didn't get to it, so now is the time. This is knit. On. I think the pattern features two different gauges. One is on four millimeter needles and one is on 4.5 millimeter needles. Uh, and they use Sennis Garn Coast or Sennis Garn Alpaca for it. So I'm thinking of using this yarn here. This is yarn that I actually have knit with before. Uh, let me search it up quickly. It is the Camaro's Yaku. I think I'm pronouncing that right. I purchased it from the Knitting Loft a few years ago now and I knit the Stockholm sweater v-neck with it. It is 100% merino and it's a really nice dusty blue, has a light heathering to it, so really nice dimension which I think is going to show off really well in a stockinette, really simple construction pattern. So I knit this project before and I had held this yarn with a acrylic mohair um, and the I found that afterwards the it was a, a little bit of a more budget lower quality mohair and it was really scratchy. <laughs> I couldn't wear it. I have a pretty good tolerance I would say but it was just too, I, it was really uncomfortable even layered under other um, tanks or tops. So that was a reason I was just not reaching for it because it was uncomfortable. And the second was this project grew so much after blocking. The body was okay, but for some reason the sleeves grew so long after blocking when even when I rolled up the sleeves or the hem, it was just really long and it wasn't the look that I was going for. So I knew I wasn't going to wear it. I ended up frogging it. and. I usually don't separate the mohair from the main strand when I'm frogging a project and re-knitting the yarn, but for this one I had to because I really didn't enjoy that mohair. And now it's ready to be knit again. So I'm thinking of knitting the sweater to pattern, but a modification I'm thinking of doing right now is working a split hem for the body. I saw this sweater on the Gaps website. <laughs> I think it was called their viral sweater or something like that and it featured it's a really similar look to the frankie genzer but it has a split hem and i was totally inspired by that so i want to make that modification we'll see how it goes though because i think the hem is work in half twisted rib so working it flat i don't know how that's going to change the gauge or the look of it so we'll see if i'll be able to do that but really want to knit this soon and i think i'll just hold the yarn single or just by itself and just knit the smaller gauge. It might be a bit airy though. I only have enough yarn to hold it single and I don't want to purchase anything else to hold with it. I just want to be able to knit the yarn as is. So we'll see if it works. Maybe I'll have to do some hacking and size down to 3.5 and we'll see how it goes. But definitely want to use this yarn for that pattern. The third pattern is one that has been in my plans for quite a while. It was in my spring knitting plans with stash yarn and it is the Crew Pants by Spectacle Streak. And this pattern, I have never knit a pair of pants before, <laughs> but I have two pairs of trousers, uh, wide leg trousers that I wear all the time in black and tan. And this pattern is quite similar to that look, but 
knitted with mohair. So I think it'll be super cozy and uh, super comfortable to wear around. These are knit with uh, Piergint by Sanis Garn, which is a heavy worsted and a strand of mohair. I'm thinking, I'm thinking of knitting mine in Lion Brand Yarns Fisherman Wool, which is a huge skein of yarn. I, you can't get this yarn to my knowledge in Canada at a store. I got this when I was in the US at Joann's um, and it has really generous meterage. I used this yarn to knit my Minto sweater, which I turned into a dress earlier this year. And I really love the wool. It's a nice workhorse yarn. Uh, it's definitely a little bit rustic, but still really comfortable next to skin. And you get really generous meterage per skein. It's 100% wool. I think it's a great price point. And the colors are all quite natural looking. It's a very limited uh, color range, but that's great. I really like all the colors. Um, so this one is in the shade 126, which I think is called Nature's Brown, but I'm only seeing the color number here. And I'm going to hold it with Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair in the shade Dark Moose. So this yarn is more of a light worsted, so we'll see how the gauge works up. I don't want it to be too loose because it is a pair of pants, uh, but maybe I can make some slight modifications and sizing down, changing the sizing. We'll see. I think I have enough yarn to knit this uh, pattern. I have around two and a half balls of this and the yardage requirements for this are uh, 1,091 meters to 1,547 meters. Um, so I should have enough. I am on the shorter side. I am five foot three. So most of the time when I do buy pants, I'm buying them from the petite section or their ankle length um, or they're, they're cropped on, on others, but perfect length for me. So I think I will be needing less than what the pattern specifies anyways, but I should have enough. Just need to figure out the gauge. Haven't knit a gauge swatch yet, but that'll be later on into the season. The fifth knitting plan that I have is the Clematis sweater by Emma Mare of Emma Knits. And I tested it for Emma earlier uh, in the summer. I knit the Silen top. I really like the way that the pattern is written. And I think the Clematis sweater is such a unique piece. It's knit, um, I think, top down and you work the back and then you have the front, which is a really cool kind of diagonal or biased button band. And it's meant to be a sweater, so I don't think you can wear it totally open because it attaches at the top. I've seen uh, knitters on Instagram style it with the bottom buttons open and the, the top ones closed. So it's a really cool top. I think it looks quite hip like that. <laughs> so I was really inspired and I want to knit it with Santa's Garn Sunday in the shade 1045, which is a kind of a light medium gray held together with Drops Kid Silk in the shade 10. I have five balls of the Sunday and five balls of the Drops Kid Silk, so I think that should be more than enough to knit the sweater. The yardage range is 875 meters to 1,900, wait, I was reading the yardage. <laughs> the meterage range is 800 meters to 1,750 meters, and it uses a fingering weight and lace weight held together, so similar to this on 4.5 millimeter knitting needles. So I'm really excited for this, not extremely excited to work the piece flat, but I really like the way that the diagonal button band works. I don't know what buttons I want to use for this project yet. I have some brown tortoiseshell buttons and some white buttons that I think I could use, but I'm thinking I could also knit, I could also use maybe black or gray. I haven't decided yet, but that'll come later on as well. So really excited to start this. Uh, and I think it's it's a really unique sweater and it was Emma's first design, which I think is incredible. <laughs> it's, it's such a cool construction. So that is the fifth knitting plan. And the sixth pattern is another My Favorite Things knitwear pattern. It is the sweater number 20. And it is similar to the sweater number 14 v-neck in that it is a v-neck, it is oversized, but this one features all over cables. And so I'm envisioning this as my 
holiday Christmas sweater because I'm going to use this combination right here. So this is Loops and Threads Cozy Wool Merino, which is a superwash merino acrylic. You get pretty generous meterage. I purchased it from Michaels in red. Held together with Drops Kid Silk in the shade 14, which I think is also red. I've used Loops and Threads Cozy Wool Merino for quite a, a few projects. It is... Um, it is super washed though, so it does grow quite a bit with blocking. So you just have to be a little bit careful with that. Um, but it has a nice drape to it and it, help, it holds up really well. The sweater number 20, I absolutely love how it looks. I've knit a few cabled projects before, but not one that is this uh, involved, I would say. There's uh, different types of cables all over the sweater. And so I'm a little bit nervous to work the sweater because I think you'll be cabling at different points. You, there's just quite a bit to keep track of. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to knit it for Christmas day, but I'm realizing that that is in three months from now. So maybe a little bit ambitious considering I haven't even swatched for it yet, but I really am envisioning that for Christmas day. I'm also Chinese. And so there is Chinese New Year, which has a very similar shade of red, which is uh, usually in February, January, February time. So if I can't finish it for Christmas, I will wear it for that. This pattern uses uh, heavy worsted and light fingering weight held together, and it is knit on 5.5 millimeter needles. So I'm realizing now, um, this may not be the best yarn to use for it, but I really like the color. <laughs> this is a light worsted kind of more DK weight yarn. So I may have to knit, a go down a few needle sizes and then maybe knit a few sizes up. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. I don't know if I want to experiment so much with that because I don't want to knit all these cables only for it to not fit. <laughs> so if not this sweater, I will find another uh, all over cable sweater. If anyone is watching and has an idea, maybe for a little bit of a lighter gauge all over cable sweater, let me know down below because I really want that for this one. Okay, and that was all of my fall knitting plans. We'll see how far I get with these plans. I really wanna cast on at least a few of these before the season is up, before it gets too cold in Toronto. And I really wanna have uh, all of these pieces to wear. If not, it's okay. It's always fun to imagine and plan for what I can use with my stash. It's always really exciting, so I really don't mind if I don't get to it. And I think that's all. Um, let me know if any of you have similar casts on plans or if you've knit these pieces before. I'd love to know or if you have any advice, uh, just leave it down below. And with that, uh, I think I'm going to sign off. <laughs> and maybe you'll see some of these in my next knitting podcast. All right, bye.